Demand the welfare of the nation that you are in because your welfare is tied to your nation's welfare. You know, good things come to people who prioritize things that matter. If you believe that we're made in the image of God, right, that means you believe that we can also create. You know, I think that it's important that in business in particular, we always try to do everything to the glory of God. However, it also says later in the Proverbs, if a man does not work, he shall not eat. So our guest today on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel is none other than Charlie Kirk, baby. Turning Point USA in the house, Charlie. And uh, thank you so much for, for being here. And uh, George, thanks for having me as a guest speaker along with Charlie here at your event. Thank you. We're lucky to have both you guys today. Very cool. So, Charlie, um, you said something at Pastor Keith's, Keith Craft Church, which is uh, Elevate Life Church. You said something about the ecclesia yes. where people aren't talking about politics, religion, sex in yes. church. Can you explain what the Ecclesiastes Yeah, so, um, and one of the most famous verses of in the scriptures, when Jesus brings his disciples up to the mouth of the Jordan River, he asks them, uh, who do men say that I am? Right, and there's this discourse back and forth, and uh, some say that you're Elijah or John the Baptist, right? And then it gets to this place where we often quote it, on this rock build my church, right? Well, if you go actually to the Greek, uh, it's on this rock build my ecclesia, right? And so ecclesia, ecclesia, all pronunciations are fine. Um, but... Basically, if you go back into the Greek, what did that word mean? It meant public gathering. It meant a place where people in the community would come together, fast, and pray for the well-being of the nation. So if you were walking in ancient Greece, mm -hmm. you know, and remember, the, the Middle East at the time, or Israel, was under Hellenistic influence, right? Heavy Hellenistic influence, lots of Greek influence. So these words would, would be well known. If you'd walk into Greece and be like, hey, I'm going to the Ecclesia, they'd think you're going to the local city council meeting. And so if you if interpret it in the Greek, Jesus was saying, on this rock, build my place that's going to impact all the other places. And therefore, it's necessary to know what's happening around you, to uh, be concerned for the welfare of the nation. You know, Jeremiah 29, 7 says very clearly, demand, the, the Lord speaking, demand the welfare of the nation that you are in, because your welfare is tied to your nation's welfare. God calls you to care about what's happening around you. I never say it's the most important thing. It's not. The most important thing is giving your life to Christ. I say that I'm doing the second most important thing, which is to make sure you can do the first thing. Gotcha. And um, I think that we need to continue to create biblical citizens, and that's kind of one of the things Amen. I focus on. Amen. Uh, George? Yeah, from an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm, we're going nonstop, and you run, a, you run a very large company. How do you still build in your time to read the Bible, time for your faith? I know you were just sharing that <laughs> yeah. with the group right now, but that's, that's an area that I want to get better in in a lot of our guys. Yeah, so uh, I'm a big believer in the Sabbath. I wasn't always. You know, when I was first growing my business, I don't have time for this. Um, I think Christians get the Sabbath wrong. We kind of throw it away and we don't take it seriously, um, largely because I think of some misinterpretations. Um, but it says in Mark that the Sabbath... Um, was made for us. We were not made for the Sabbath, meaning this was given to us as a way to try to allow us to flourish. Um, so I do, I do a rather religious Sabbath every Friday to Saturday night. I turn off my phone, put it in a drawer. I'm untouchable. I'm, un I'm uncontactable, right? And I'll get, I'll kind of talk to you on Saturday night. Um, and you know, good things come to people who prioritize things that matter. You know, and so Jesus said in the scriptures, the hard things, right, the things we want come to those people who fast and pray. Well, you know that most prayer used to happen on the Sabbath, right? That that was really a time where you slowed your life down. And for me, it's been the greatest blessing. It really has. And then, you know, trying to prioritize it. For me, I have, got, and this has, you know, been a choice. I'm not saying I'm a good person for whatever. I've gotten rid of all secular music. Right? So I said, I'm going to listen to music. It's going to be worship music. Right? And I still hear a song here and there when you're in an Uber or whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's fine. But I found all of a sudden I'm a much happier person. Wow. You know, music is one of the ways I believe God communicates to his people. There's the longest book of the Bible is a musical book. Song, the book of Psalms. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I think the type of music that we actually internalize needs to glorify God. And so those have been some good things for me. Um, and then honestly admitting that I know very little about the Bible has been one of the most freeing experiences. I used to get into this kind of sinful uh, contest. Like, I know more about the Bible than you. I really, it's, it's awful. You know, it's just, we all know a minuscule. And it's really, it's God's DNA blueprint that has been given down to us. 66 books and one author that allows us an opportunity to kind of see a window into the divine, have a chance to be able to be redeemed for things that we, you know, quite honestly, were, were born with original sin and be able to have eternal life. You know, oftentimes people say, okay, I'm in a church, but, you know, God wants me to be content. God will provide. 
And I'm challenged with that sometimes as an entrepreneur, and many times as an entrepreneur, because you're trying to assist and help other people to become entrepreneurs. Yes. That's what George and I do. We encourage people to educate themselves financially. What's some biblical perspectives yes. and myths that people need to overcome? Yes, yeah, so we must trust God in all things, right? I have it right here on my, it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. That's right, and lean on your own understanding. Um, however, it also says later in the Proverbs, if a man does not work, he shall not eat. Well, let's just use one of the parables that Jesus taught about multiplication. So God wants us to multiply, right? There's a couple themes that God reemphasizes throughout the entire story of the Bible. It's not just a story, but around the Bible, multiplication is one, faithfulness, prayer. But multiplication is what I love. So at the beginning of the Bible, it says be fruitful and multiply. And Jesus goes even a step further. He says, if you don't multi multiply, you're in sin. Hmm. Parable, parable of the talents, right? That's right? So if you look at the parable of the talents, Really, really simply and quickly, the person who got something and did nothing with it gets harshly condemned. Person who minorly multiplies, it gets eh. But the person who was able to really want to do more with what God gave you yeah. is really given um, a satisfactory response in the telling of Jesus in that parable. And so look, it's a very important thing. You can have things, just don't let things have you. That's a really important kind of lesson. And do all things for the glory and the betterment for Christ Jesus, right? And so, um, you know, we, 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 there's a lot of different scriptures that kind of reflect to this, but it's important to understand that God never wants you to be stationary, right? And so God wants you to trust in him on everything, but he wants you to be active. He wants you to be fruitful and multiplying, to be salt and light. <laughs> salt and light means to go to places that are unsalty and dark, right? right. And that requires a kind of entrepreneurial mindset. And finally, you know, I don't think that there's any biblical basis for this idea that the creation of new things is bad. So if you take into, if you believe that we're made in the image of God, mm -hmm. right, that means you believe that we can also create, Correct. right? So Correct. that means that we can create things. Now, the idea of we being able to create is a very minuscule, almost indecipherable amount of God's ability to create the cosmos and the galaxies, right? But this idea that we are made in the image of God, it says very clearly in Genesis 1, well, then to create new businesses, to create families, that, that, that I believe is living in the pattern of how God actually wants us to exist. We're, we're creating. Uh, Daniela is having a baby. What? I didn't know yeah, I know, I know. That's why I thought I'd surprise you on the video. And tell <laughs> That's Charlie. That's awesome. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. We're going to announce it tonight at the gala. So. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Just, Being fruitful yes. and multiplying. Yes. We're creating. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Charlie, one last thing. Um, when, when, when we're thinking about our home state, Illinois. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, you're, we're both in the Chicagoland area. It's so sad. And, and entrepreneurship has saved, but we're, we, we both don't have a college degree, but yet entrepreneurship is yes. literally, next to Christ, has really saved our financial economic lives. And I'm seeing Illinois just get crushed, you know, this Pritzker is just, you know, tax. What can Illinois do to start healing itself? Yeah, man, Illinois is tough. I mean, it should be the greatest state in the country. It's an amazing location, phenomenal people. You know, we were both we were both there. We know the spirit of a Chicago mm -hmm. is unlike anything other, right? It's a championship city. You know, not the your, cu your Cubs guy or Sox guy. Uh, so it's funny. I, uh, <laughs> I have it's to a say, Chicago question. I, yeah, I have to say Cubs, but I, I cheered for the Sox in 05 when they won the World Series. Of course, I, I, of course, you had to. And I, I got kicked out of class for doing that and all sorts of things. <laughs> it's it, it's up there with putting you know ketchup on hot dogs, liking both the, the Cubs and the Sox. You're not allowed to do it. Um, but I mean, that is an intense inner inner city rivalry. Um, Foot, but football unifies us. 85 Bears, baby. <laughs> we have no good sense. But uh, yeah. well, we lost the, I think, the 08 Super Bowl with uh, Rex Gross. Rex Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peyton Manning. Against Peyton Manning. Yeah. Right. That, that Super Bowl was in Miami, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, what, what's, the, what's the main takeaway here? Um, Illinois needs to recommit itself to hopefully be a state that wants to be free, and it doesn't. It's going the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. States like Florida, states like Texas, states like Tennessee are doing so well. They're creating jobs. They're protecting rights. They're doing, they're doing really well, and Illinois isn't. There sh it, sh it should be the opposite. Illinois should be flourishing. And, and, and I guess I'll ask one last question, if I may. Um, we actually sent you a jersey. I don't know if you got it. Yeah, I did. On it. Cool. Yeah, cool. cool. I yeah. loved it. And Thank the last, you. The last time you saw it. It was terrific. Yeah, and we're, we're moving to Tennessee as well because of Patrick's advice. We were looking at okay. Texas, and I know you guys just moved there. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't want to. We didn't. We're like, that's a problem. We're leaving the blue states. I know. <laughs> I live in Arizona now. I left I left Illinois. Gotcha. Is, it, is, it, is it purple? or? It's purple. Well, I feel called to be there for my line of work right now. I think that moving the dial in Arizona will be really good. If we lose Arizona, we lose the country. But it's nowhere near as free as Texas, I can tell you.
How, how do you incorporate your faith into business while we still have a very free environment where not everybody that's there is Christian? Sure. How do you do How do we do a better job of that? Yeah, not being preachy, I think, is important, right? You want to try to make people compelled to want to follow, right? And so you want to try to have a spark like, oh, that person has something special about them, the way they treat people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that about that. You, you don't want to just kind of get up and tell everybody... You, know, you don't want to fall into the trap of the Pharisees or the Sadducees. Like, I know what's right, and you yeah. don't. Like that, you know, you got to live it out, right? By your fruit, you, you will know, right? Um, at the same time, you, you, you saw that in the private area. I was unafraid to talk about my beliefs very clearly. And I think you'll find that people, they want that, right? Yeah, it's refreshing. I think that people are like, wow, he actually is comfortable saying, Jesus is Savior? Like, maybe I can do that, Right? And maybe, you know, that, that kind of clarity, I think, is important. And, you know, I think that it's important that in business in particular, we always try to do everything to the glory of God, right? And so, you know, we want to be ecumenical and magnanimous. We're the same way with what we're doing. At the same time, you want to, of course, try to be pointing everything towards a virtuous end. Awesome. Chart, we look forward to seeing you on stage. Okay. It looks like they're calling you, man. i got to figure out what I'm going to say. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> if you guys are watching this on YouTube, we're about to go on stage. But watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode from Las Vegas with Charlie Kirk, George Ply. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to live smart. And be money smart today. God bless.